Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take class on Indian Constitution. Uh, so this will be an introductory class and we'll talk about sources and features of the Indian Constitution. So let us briefly look in the background, the making of the Indian Constitution. We know that uh, since the end of the Second World War, India was about to find its freedom. So there were a lot of talks going on and the government in Brit Britain changed. So Lord Attlee the, from the Labour Party became the new Prime Minister and they were eager to grant independence to India since Britain or UK was in a, um, though it had won the war, but it had made a lot of losses during the Second World War. So it could not keep its hold over India for a very long time. So with the mission of granting independence to India, what will be the nature of the independence, the future of the, the, the way it will look, the India, future India. So there were a lot of things to be taken care of. So there was this uh, cabinet mission plan, which was sent to India by the British uh, Parliament and it visited India in the March, month of March, 1946. And the uh, cabinet mission plan proposed a three tier federation, so group A, group B, group C. And we know these federations were divided on the basis of the demography. In the group A, most of the states which had the provinces in those times, which had Hindu maturity were placed. So we know that the central provinces, present Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, South Indian states, the non-princely states or the British provinces were kept in group A. And for group B, we had more of Muslim majority provinces like the Northwest Frontier Agency, the present day it's in Pakistan, uh, the uh, Punjab and in East Bengal. Uh, so these were kept in Group B, while in Group C there were mixed states like uh, mostly Punjab and uh, the Punjab, former Punjab that is the present, half of it lies in Pakistan and half in India. So it had a mixed population of Sikh, Hindus and Muslims, so it was kept in Group C. Also Assam, the state was kept in Group C. Uh, we know in the people from Assam, they know that there was a lot of protest uh, about this. And then uh, keeping these things in mind, even though the people of India or the leaders of India were, did not agree to this uh, plan of federation, we know there were a lot of protests from International Congress, Nehru, uh, Sardar Ballabhai Patel protesting against it. Uh, while uh, to some extent uh, Muslim League supported it because they thought that a weak federation, a weak central government would be beneficiary for them. And uh, with such things uh, going on, the Constituent Assembly was, uh, you know, formed. And this constituent assembly actually a composed of a representative of governor, the Indian governor provinces, like the British provinces, as well as the princely states. I am not going to details about that. Maybe in the next video we'll talk about it. And, the, and we know that there were uh, elections in 1946 based on which the uh, constituent assembly was formed. And in this election, Congress, Indian National Congress, had won most of the states. And if you see the leadership, the leadership composed of two kinds, one of the political leadership and the technical. Political here, we know Pandit Zola, Nehru, Sardar, Ballabhai Patel, Molana, Abdul Kalam, Azad, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, they were big sorts in those times. And this and technical aspect, we know there were some people who were experts, legal experts, experts on constitution, Sir B. N. Rao, uh, Sir B. R. Ambedkar. So these people also were made up in this particular constituent assembly. And the work for the first constituent assembly was held on, the first meeting was held on 9th of December 1946. And this meeting was presided over by Dr. Sachidananda Sina, the temporary president or chairman of the meeting. And in this meeting, Dr. Rajendra Prasad was nominated as the chairman. Later on, he was uh, elected as the president of India. And Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar also was made the chairman of the drafting committee in this meeting. And we know the constitution took almost uh, two months two years and 11 months to complete and it was completed on 26 November 1949 even though it had to wait for 26 January 1950 in order to be enforced. So if we see the sources of the constitution, this is also important, we know that Indian constitution was not an evolved constitution, it did not happen over a period of time, it was enacted, it was written down in concrete form. So it took inspiration from a number of sources. So if we see the foreign sources, the foreign influence of foreign constitution, uh, we know that uh, legal experts like BN, Sir B. N. Rao had traveled extensively to different countries and gathered data and information regarding the working of different constitutions. So here in this slide, I present some of the important influence of the Indian constitution. So if you take United Kingdom, we know that since Britain ruled over us, a lot of things were taken from it, parliamentary system of government, the rule of law, and many lot of things. And also from USA, we took the idea of fundamental rights, independence of judiciary, preamble, 
from Canada, we had this system of federal system with a strong central provision of discretionary powers of the governor or the president. And from Germany, we had the emergency provisions of the president of India. From Ireland, there were the issues of directive principle of state policies. And for the French constitution, we took the idea of liberty, equality, and fraternity. And this was some of the, even though there are many other countries, but this was the important one. And there were many other sources too, like the impact of government of India Act 1935. We know, and since uh, since the British beginning of the British rule in India from uh, 1757 onwards, the Battle of uh, Palasi and Battle of Buxar 1765 onwards, the British have been enacting a number of rules and regulations in order to uh, you know, uh, keep maintain law and order in this country. So one of the important was this impact of the government of India Act 1935. We know that there were initially government of India 1909, 1919, where diarchy was introduced in India. I mean, the biochemical legislature was introduced. And, but the act of 1935, it gave a lot of power to the provincial government. We can say that the present, uh, the, the present form of government, which we have between the division of power between the center and the state, the concurrent list of power, all these things were actually in some way inculcated in the government of India 1935. So a lot of things were taken from there. We can see here by the legislature, federalism, emergency provisions, centrist relation, which were all present in the government of India Act 1935. Some of the critics even accused the Constituent Assembly of borrowing in wholesale from this particular act. And we have the legacy of the national movement. We know that the whole national movement of uh, more than 200 years was a quest for liberty, equality, justice. And uh, way back in 1930 itself, Nehru in one of the Congress session, maybe Lahore session, if I can uh, remember correctly, he had moved an objective revolution for the uh, objective resolution for the making of the Indian constitution, the future Indian constitution. So it was always there in the mind of our national leaders. And debates and discussions of the Constituent Assembly, we know the Constituent Assembly composed of peoples of intellectuals and peoples of experts from different walks of life. And they were all illuminaries, they were all experts in their own fields. And if you go through the debates, it's one of the illuminating debates in the world history, we can say. So our, uh, the Constituent Assembly or the Constitution itself gained a lot from these debates. And coming to the critics, we know that even after making of the Constitution, in the early part of the 19... Uh, 49 itself, where the constitution draft was ready, the constitution was placed for opinion of different people. And there are a lot of experts, critics uh, commenting on the constitution. And these two actually help in the making of the Indian constitution. And we'll just see the basic features. We'll talk about it in detail maybe in the next uh, video tour. So we know this longest constitution in the world, almost 25 chapters, um, more than 10,000 words. And the American constitution in this comparison is just composed of a few chapters. So it is written constitution, one we know it is not an evolved one, it is a written one and partly rigid and practically flexible. Some of the part of this constitution are very rigid like the uh, powers of the president, powers of the prime minister. It's very difficult to change or amend them, whereas uh, some parts are very flexible. We can do it with, in a, with a very few you know, majority, like the change in the name of the state, change in the state boundaries, creation of new states. So these are it's partly rigid and practically flexible. And also we have fundamental rights and fundamental duties. We know this, uh, we'll be talking about that. And we have directive principle of state policy and this directive principle of state policies act as a guidelines in the making of the welfare state. Though they are not enforceable, but the state is supposed to follow them. And unlike USA, we have single citizenship in India. We can be only Indian citizen, not citizen of Tamil Nadu, citizen of Maharashtra or citizen of Assam. So a strong center with federal features. We know that our center is quite strong when it comes to various provisions. But we can take the example of present COVID-19 pandemic where most of the writs or the guidelines are issued by the center. So most of the items or most of the issues are in the hand of the center in India. And also we have secular socialist state. This was not a initially part of the original constitution, but it was included, these words were included by the 42nd Amendment of 1976 by Indira Gandhi. Uh, and we have emergency provisions. We know there are three kinds of emergency, national emergency in Article 352, provincial or the president rule, we call it Article 356, and the financial emergency in Article 360. And also there is another important feature of the Indian constitution, which is unamendable basic feature. We know some part of this constitution is the basic structure like the secularism um, or the directive fundamental rights. So 
in a number of cases, the Supreme Court has given this uh, reads given this um, conclusion that some parts of the constitution should not be amended. This is what is known as the basic structure of the Indian constitution. And also another important point we have is a special provision for backward classes. We know that we have uh, the provision for uh, affirmative action known as reservation quota system. So this is for the upliftment of the weaker section of the society. And as we know, most importantly, it's a document of socio-economic revolution. We know that Indian constitution is a very important document. We, what is the situation of India in 1947? It was a poor, underdeveloped country. So in order to raise this country, in order to take it to the new heights and to keep its democracy alive, one of the largest democracy in the world, it, has, it acted as a socio-economic revolution in the country. That's why uh, I mean, experts like Granville Austin have called it a living document. So this 